I'm unstoppable, 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 unstoppable. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Unstoppable Women's Podcast. I have been so excited about this guest that we have this week since I asked her to be on the podcast. She is from the same area I'm from. She, I'm so glad to reconnect with her and call her my friend, Cicely Simpson. Welcome. Thank to- you. I'm so excited. Yes, yes. Now, a lot of people like start off with the title of what somebody is, but I always like you to introduce your title because that is something that you know better than anybody else. So can you kind of tell people a little bit about yourself and we'll get started into the podcast before we get started? Yeah, absolutely. Look, you and I grew up, I think a couple of miles from each other, right? Yeah. So not far. So, uh, so thanks for the opportunity. I am a small town, Tennessee girl like you. So, um, and that's what you see behind me here. So, uh, hopefully, uh, no animals are going to run, you know, behind me or anything here, but, uh, I currently spend half my time in DC and half my time in, in Tennessee. So my day job is I'm the founder and CEO of summit public affairs, which is a lobbying and communications firm. Uh, in Washington, D.C., and I have clients that I serve all over the country, some international clients as well. And so, listen, people are going to say, what does that mean? That just means I represent companies who need to talk to the federal government. So you need to talk to the White House, you need to talk to Congress, you need to talk to federal agencies. I'm basically a liaison between uh, companies, nonprofits, for-profits who uh, who want to talk to folks in Washington. So that's a long way of saying uh, <laughs> that's my title, and that's, that's, the, that's the day job. Yes, that's awesome. That's a lot in your day job too. Your plate is completely full. So again, I'm so thankful that you took time to come out here and talk to us on this. But uh, so one of the things that I really like about you is that once you have something, a vision, you go for it. And you've also started your own website, CicelySimpson.com. Is that correct? CicelySimpson.com. Absolutely. Absolutely. Not only do you do all of that, you're in Washington, you're in Tennessee some with your mom and then you're in Washington some. So you travel a lot. Um, you also do leadership training and you help other people with like personal coaching as well. So can you kind of explain a little bit about that too? Absolutely. So Megan, what I've done is I've learned for my 20 plus years in DC, I've learned a lot of lessons being in both government, but I've learned a lot of leadership lessons being in corporate America. Mm -hmm. And really the intersection of those two is kind of where I spend most of my time. And so I've taken a lot of those lessons that I've learned from politics and business. And that's what I have now started a program called the chair leadership program It's leadership coaching for individuals. I coach teams, I coach companies, but what it comes from the first African-American Congresswoman, her name was Shirley Chisholm. And she had a quote that I just think just sums up your life. You know, you have a vision too. you go for things. And so do I. And her quote was, if they don't give you a seat at the table, bring a folding chair. I love that. And I think that just sums up so many of us who have big dreams and things we want to do, but we have to make our own way and create our own conversation to get there. And so the leadership coaching is born out of, uh, out of those leadership lessons over the past 20, 25 years, but it all stems from that one piece of the equation, which is, you know what, don't wait for somebody to invite you to the table. True leaders pull up their chair and they get to work and they set the table themselves versus waiting for someone to invite them. So that's the idea of the lessons from politics and business that come into the leadership coaching. I absolutely love that quote. I saw that on your side and I just, it resonated with me because I can't tell you how many times that I have tried to do something. Like I knew I was good at something, but I'm like, right. if I could be given the opportunity. If I could be given the opportunity, I'm like, I know what I'm good at. But then one day I was like, you know what? I'm going to create my own opportunity. Uh, you know, exactly right. you just because because then people start noticing you. And, and that's how, you know, Coach Burke found me by creating my own opportunity and putting myself out there. And that's probably how you get, you get, came where you came, you know, um, in your business and your role there. So um, one thing that we were kind of talking about before, you know, she did tell you guys that we are from basically the same area, the same hometown. Uh, my mom, was she your teacher or was she, was she? Was she there in the school? Was mom? She was. Yeah. She was. Oh, yeah. I've known your mom for years, and I know you've known my family, you yes. know, as well. Yes. So my mom loves her. So she was so excited to know that I was going to interview you today. Oh. And uh, so, yes. Yeah, so it's just, it's just awesome how it all comes together, and just seeing you so successful and doing big things in the world. And one thing that we talked about is, you know, living in a small town, and there's a lot of awesome people that do wonderful jobs here. But then sometimes going outside of the box and thinking outside of the box, saying, 
I'm going to do something different. I'm going to become an entrepreneur. I'm going to become a lobbyist. I'm going to work at DC. You know, that's something that isn't typical, you know, um, unless you're from a bigger city or, you know, you have those more opportunities there, but we're from a town of a very uh, small population. So what made you decide, was it in high school, college? It said, I'm going to do this. I'm going to go, I'm going to go for DC. What made, what made you kind of tick to go there? You know what? You're so right. I mean, what, a couple thousand people maybe in our town, maybe if that, maybe. Um, and, and listen, when I went to college in Nashville, that was not a big leap, but some people were like, you know, they go to my mom and say, what is she doing? Yeah. And then when I, what really sort of helped me really expand sort of my horizons um, is when I left Lipscomb University in Nashville, Megan, mm -hmm. I got a chance to go to law school at Pepperdine in California. And listen, God is good because Malibu, California is just amazing and I gorgeous. It's been, yes. you know, three years, but that was the genesis for me. Um, because when I got accepted into Pepperdine, my parents were like, you're going where? And I was like, oh, I'm going to California. And they're like, you understand that's like clear on the other side of the country. Right. And it wasn't until that experience that I really got out of Tennessee and really got out of a, uh, you know, small town that I was like, oh, wow. Wow. I, and I was just in awe of the surroundings of being in California and to your point, even coming from California back to Tennessee for a brief period of time and then getting an opportunity to go to D.C. I mean, D.C. was not part of my plan, but I think your, your point about vision and it is about opportunity. Mm -hmm. Listen, I've always said to myself, my parents have always said to me, try it. If it doesn't like it, you can come home. Yes. But don't rob yourself of an opportunity because you're too scared to try. Right. And, and that is a big piece I talk about in our in our leadership training is I am a person who lives with no regrets. I'd rather try it and fail or try and not like it than to sit here and wonder what would have happened if I, yes. if, you know, if I didn't try at all. Mm -hmm. So I think that's really what's been a driving force for me. And listen, in my day job now, coming back to Tennessee, I get the best of both worlds. I get the community that you and I grew up in. I get, you know, to ground myself back here at home. But then when the hustle and bustle and the negotiating of legislation and politics happens, I'm back on the plane to DC. So I do love that my world has come full circle now where I left and now I'm back and that I get the benefit of both worlds. But I do think it's the opportunity and vision you're talking about. I think you're spot on about you have to really have a passion to pursue those opportunities and know that they may not be part of your five or 10 year plan. They come out of nowhere and you're like, I'm going to do this. Yes. Um, and, and let you tell me about yours. Cause you've also had a vision. You've done amazing things as well. You know, tell me about how that's worked for you too. Cause I feel like we have a lot in common in that regard. We, do. we sure do. And I, I love the more I get to hear you talk more. And I, I was like, gosh, I just love her more and more. So that's the thing. That's, <laughs> Sorry. I get too excited sometimes. I love it. I love that. I love the energy and the, and the vision that you have, because I'm the, I'm the same way. Like I always knew I was called to do more. But I didn't know why, you know, when you're a kid, you're like, man, I could be on that Wheaties commercial. I could be doing this. You know, you just have that like something in you. Right. And I think a lot of people that have that, that hustling entrepreneur spirit and, and people look at hustle as a bad terminology sometimes. No, I have, you have to have hustle. You have to have grit. You have to have courage to go after that. And that is one thing that I've always said my quote in high school, everybody had these like historical quotes and I was always being silly. I'm always been like a bully personality. I was like, when life gives you a lemon, trade it for a strawberry. And I'm like, I do that because you can create your own future, right? So if you don't That's like exactly it, right. it for another piece of fruit, you know? And that was like, what really got me, like, I always knew I wanted to do it. And my son got, when he was disabled for a long time, he had um, autism and we had to do four therapies a week and I couldn't do the nine to five job anymore. And uh, so I had to be very creative. Uh, income was a big issue. And I knew Ooh. that, even though we had supplement to supplement help, like I had to create more money to generate more money for my family. So it kind of put me into a box where I had to hustle. I had to get that grit and it rose up within me. And that prey drive, like, you know, coach Bart talks about sometimes that came out because I was backed in a corner. Best thing could have happened to me though. Um, I was able to be home with my child getting better, which he's a lot better than he was because of the therapies that we were able to hit. That's awesome. But I was also able to start my own, my first business uh, with events which led me to coach Burke's team and handling his events and HR and all those other, all the other hats I wear there at that business. <laughs> and, you know, I've, I've been places my whole life. Like I've been told by some people like, don't go to new Orleans. There's a bunch of witches down there. You know how it is in a small town. Right. <laughs> and I remember the first time I traveled there, I was like, this is amazing. These people are right. so nice. It's awesome. And I was like, okay, if this is what it is, 
like I love where I, at the end of the day, I love being in my little country house. I love my farm like you do, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. The exposure, getting out and learning people and their cultures and what they do. There's so much to learn about people and you can respect people more. You can love people more because you understand where they come from. And that's right. I loved, I love going to New Orleans. I love going to California. I was always scared to go to California. I thought it was going to be so big. I get lost. Loved oh yeah. It. And it was just one of the opportunities. So when I'm with, with coach Bert, it helped me because I got to travel so much with him. And there's times where I'm sitting at home now and I'm like, I need my prey drive activated. Coach, what, what trip are you going on next? I need to go on a trip with you to get activated again. Exactly. You know? exactly. So, yeah. so yeah, I think we're about the like in that area. I think exposure is a really important because sure. if not, you won't see how big the world is and what you can do within the world. That's exactly right. No, you're spot on about that. And I love that, you know, once you have that exposure, yes. you want more and you're right, you want yes. to do it again. And, you know, and it does sort of feed your spirit a little bit in terms of, you know, your prey drive and making sure, you know, cause, because you see so many things. Like, I mean, I went to Australia last year and literally just got back before the pandemic started. Yes. Uh, yes. But you know, that opened my entire world to a whole new thing because first of all, I've always wanted to go as a bucket list item, but it was interesting because one of the, one of the Uber drivers there was like, are you from the, you from the U S and I was like, yeah, he knew more about U S politics than I did. And I work in it every day. And I tell that story to so many people because it opened my eyes. It opened my eyes so much. And I, I mean, I literally, that was probably one of the best Uber rides I've ever had. But I said to that guy, I was like, you're incredible. Like, how do you know so much about the U S and it just, it was just a whole different sort of, you know, twist for me. And at least in my, my job of being in DC, you know, every day that you just never think about those things until you experience them. And then you're like, yeah, the exposure is, is it just opens your mind to so many possibilities. So I, I love, I love exactly what you just said. Yes, absolutely. So that, that is so important. And what I, what I love um, too about you and I, and I try to keep the same thing too, when you do big things, you know, you remember where you came from. You remember to stay humble and who you are because, and I believe that you have fully done that. And that means so much to people because they see that, hey, I, I like this person. I can relate to them. You know, they were from where I'm from, but not only that, it didn't change them. It, it, it They still are who they are and they still love on people and give back. And I'm so, I'm so grateful uh, to have met you because you, you are like that. And I, I try to always align my friendships with people like that because it's so important, you know, to, to have that. So kudos Thank to you on that. <laughs> Your mom Thank and dad you. Listen, I had the same, you and I had the same upbringing. Yes. Don't forget where you came from. Don't forget where you came from. That's for sure. You know, the people in this little small town have been there supporting you way before you, you know, found these other places, these opportunities. So don't forget, you know, don't forget where you come from and, and so that's been a lesson I know that's been instilled in me from my, you know, from my family and from your family. And I, I got to be honest with you, I think you're right, Megan. That's what, that's what makes us who we are. We're informed by our surroundings. We're informed by our environment. And I'd like to think, you know, listen, I say Woodbury, Tennessee, and people know where it is now. When I used to say, they'd be like, I'm sorry, Wood what? And I, you know, so it's one of those where I, I constantly take our upbringing with us wherever we go. Right. It's a part of who we are. And, you know, I have people in DC now who are like, Hey, you head back to Woodbury. Like, it's just one of those things where I feel like I just carry, you know, so much of it with me because it informs who I am. So you're, you're grateful to say that. And I, I appreciate that. But I think, uh, I think we all, yeah, we're all informed by our backgrounds and by our, by our surroundings. Yes. And it gets to show somebody. So if we have a viewer watching today, I know, I know mm -hmm. in my past podcast, I've had viewers that were watching and they were in a place of complacency, like, how do I do this? You know, they look at people and their success and they think, oh, they must have had a golden spoon or, you know, whatever. And that's not true or a silver spoon, whatever it's called. Anyways, but um, that's not true. I mean, it, you, anybody can have it. It's the American dream, right? It truly is at this point where anybody can go for whatever they, they want to go for. They just have to believe in themselves. And sometimes it took somebody coming along, encouraging me, believing mm -hmm. in me pushing me. And those people I call them, they speak life words into my life. And I'm trying to do that to others too. Mm -hmm. So if you are here watching this podcast, Cicely, what would you say to somebody that was here watching this, that is kind of at a turning point in their life where they don't really know what they want to do, but they know that they're called for more. What would be your advice for them? I think the first piece I would say to them is you have to know your what. Mm-hmm right? You've got to know your what, what is that thing that you want to do? It's okay if you don't know how to do it, right? That's where people like, you know, me come in and say, okay, so because the first question I ask all the clients is what is your what? What do you want to do? What drives you, right? What's your why? And there's another way to put it. 
why do you do, why do, why do you have this big dream and why do you feel stuck like you can't do that? Until you give voice to it and until you acknowledge it, whatever reason you're stuck or frustrated, you can't move past it. So it is absolutely the first place I start. Look, it's where I started with me. I used to be that person who would walk in a room and I'd sit in the back, you know, I'd sit in the back. I wouldn't go sit at the table. I used to be that person who would sort of sit there and wonder, like, what are they talking about? And like, how do decisions get made? And, you know, who are the people who are sort of, you know, I was, I was that person. And to your point, I said, you know what? No one's going to, and I say this all the time, no one's going to advocate and be your champion unless you do it. You're the only person who can believe in yourself and say, you know what? I actually want to do what they're doing. I actually want to be at that table. You know, there's a conversation going on. I think I can add value to that. Only we can be our own best champions. And until we realize that, then that feeling of being stuck and that feeling of what do we do, we sort of stay mired in it because we don't feel empowered to create the conversation that's going to put us where we want to be. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you and I are here to tell everybody who's watching this podcast it just starts with you saying, yes, don't worry about a week from now or two weeks from now or three months from now, yes, start okay. with today and just say, you know what, I'm going to make, take one small step That's just today, one small step. And then tomorrow, one small step. And then those steps really start to add up, but you have to sort of say yes to yourself before you can really go down that path in any sort of holistic or, you know, consistent way. And that takes a lot. I was very nervous when I, um, you know, when I got to Congress, when I got to DC, I had no clue what I was doing. When I started working in corporate America, everybody's like, oh, corporate America is horrible and it's hard. And it was, listen, it taught me a lot of lessons, but it was also one of those where I was like, if I don't raise my hand, nobody's going to raise it for me. You're exactly right. So exactly right on that. And that's, and that's the thing people say, how do you do it? You just do it. You, you just, just do it somewhere and you can yeah. figure it out as you go. You know, that's right. There's, you and don't be scared to say, Hey, you know what? Well, I genesis to a lot of the leadership coaching, Megan, because people would, I would do a lot of speaking engagements about politics mm -hmm. and people would come up to me and they'd say, so how did you do what you did? And I'm like, wait, what does that mean? Yeah. And they're like, well, you know, you've held some important roles. You know, obviously you were in a national role at the time. Uh, the job I was in was a very national sort of prominent role. And they're like, how did you do that? And I'm like, I have done nothing that you can't do yourself. I have not, you know, this is, there is not some secret like, oh, you've got to go find this. I'm like, I have definitely failed and tried. And I've been told no, no more times, uh, you know, than I care to count. But I always tell people, uh, Vice President Kamala Harris has a quote, I eat no for breakfast. I'm like, today's no is tomorrow's yes. You just can't let it, you know, some people really hear no, or they think they can't. And they just become paralyzed by it. Yes. And I'm like, absolutely not. That per Listen, that person had a bad day. That had nothing to do with me. And I go back and try, you know, try again. So whatever, whatever that looks like, I just feel like there is such a, there is such a need. And, you know, and I just, I just refuse to accept. No, I, I don't know. Maybe that's, you know, maybe that's, that sounds, you know, a little, like a little too much, but I, I just think, you never know until you try. And I appreciate that you've asked that question because I think it's such a key question that mm -hmm. so many people who watch your podcast ask you, people who know your world will coach Bert will ask you, people ask me. And it's like, we're not doing something special. We just decided, you know what? We're not going to take no for an answer. Right. That's right. That's right. And I, th I feel like that is so, that is important too. Like if you hear no, don't mm -hmm. give up. Because right. so many times I, I interviewed um, Tori Cruz last week. Mm -hmm. and, I saw that. And she was Miss, you know, Missouri. And it took her, I believe she said six times to win that crown. And if she had just stopped at no the first two times, she never would be on the platform that she has maybe to touch so many people's lives, you know? That's and exactly it's just right. so important. People think that it, it's going to come overnight or it's not going to come or they get discouraged and things like that. I mean, even when I do this podcast, I mean, it's sometimes this is how I've had a little spotty service. And I'm like, you know what? It's okay. I'm out here in the country. Yeah. It's okay. Yeah. You know, it doesn't have to be perfect. It just, That's has right. to be, you know, the more organic things can be, the more natural things can be, the more relatable you're going to be to your audience. And I think that it's important that people see life isn't perfect. You're going That's to, right. and it's messy. It's messy. And I'm, I, I know I've been divorced. I've had failures in my life and everybody's like, why are you talking about that? Because you know what? I'm not ashamed to say if I can help somebody through my story, that's fine. You know, like that's exactly before, right. a lot of people want to keep their ugliness in the basement so nobody can see it and put all their pretty things up in their house. But that's, it doesn't need to be that way. It needs to be up 
because I could help you. You could help me if we just get in there. And I say that a lot because it's so important for people to hear that. That's right. You know? Well, you they have to be authentic. It's a, you're authentic. It's your story. It's who you are. I'm the same way. I love uh, that. You know, people just see the rosy and they think, you know, oh, well, you just had it made. I'm like, are you freaking kidding me? <laughs> Absolutely not. I can tell you, you know, I mean, I listen, I've, I've been fired from jobs before. Uh, you know, just because I was doing my job well and somebody, you know, was like, oh, well, I mean, there's all kinds, you know, you can't, I guess my point is you can't let others insecurities right. derail yours. Yeah. You're going to have some setbacks, but there are things that are out of your control. And it may be something like I went through where I was doing a great job, but you know what? Somebody didn't think I was, and they decided, you know, we're, we're done. We're going to replace her. So there's so many things though, that I think you bring your authentic self yes. and, you know, you're talking about being in the country. I went, um, you know, I talked to coach Burt, he and I reconnected at, cause he grew up with us as well. And he said something, uh, in one of his seminars that really resonated with me, Megan, and I hear you saying the same thing, which is stop, you know, stop majoring in the minors, right? right? Stop sweating the small stuff. Yes. I mean, go bigger, go higher, have that dream. And yeah, you know, so what if your internet's spotty? So what if you have a, a couple of bad days? There are no such thing as bad days cause you're learning from them. Right. So I I've started saying that a lot now. I quote, I, you know, quote coach on that a lot. I'm like, man, stop, stop majoring in the minors guys. I mean, like, you know, you're playing small ball. And, and so I'm, I'm with you hundred percent. The people who want to hide parts of them. Cause they're like, Oh, I don't want anybody to know. I'm like, I bring my full self and you know, all my, all my flaws, Lord, there are many, but you know, you got, it's, it's who you are. And it's, it's why your, your leadership is so authentic. Mm -hmm. It's because you do bring your whole self to these things, the good, the bad, the failures, the triumphs, the victories. Mm -hmm. It's all, it's all part of it. It's That's all right. part of the journey. That's right. And people can see that for sure. I, I want to take the last few minutes because I want people to know how they can plug into you. We've talked about uh, your website, CicelySimpson.com. That's a good way to reach you, but you also have a podcast as well. So let's talk about that podcast. How can they find your podcast? Listen to it. Great. Yeah. So thank you for that. I have two podcasts launching. Uh, one is called Bipartisan. Uh, it is a bipartisan conversation between myself and my co-host about the issues that are driving the day. So one thing, Megan, you and I've talked about here is leadership and common ground. Right. And I think that is so missing from our national discourse. So listen, wherever you listen to podcasts, subscribe to Pi uh, Bipartisan. And listen, I just love that name. Like that name just cracks me Dude, up. That's so uh, yeah. I know, isn't it Bipartisan? But I was asked to be a co-host. I'm so excited to lend to the national conversation to help mm -hmm. people find common ground. The other one is Pull Up a Chair podcast uh, that's going to be launching uh, in September as well. That is about the chair leadership program. It is about those principles of not being, you know, not waiting until you're in invited to the table but pulling up your chair and I'm so excited that is a collaboration with Forbes books uh, I have a book coming out with Forbes uh, hopefully later this year in 2021 or early 2022 so look folks can find me on Instagram Twitter Facebook it's Cicely Simpson they can find me at cicelysimpson.com and I just encourage you know the, the interaction the dialogue I love the comments I get online I love you know hearing from folks and I I learn from them so I encourage people please you know plug in uh, to those podcasts, listen to either or both. And then listen, I look forward to fi find me online and let's have a conversation. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, that's great. Okay. So my last question for you, and I always try to end the podcast with this is okay. what does it mean? Cause it's unstoppable podcast. What does it mean to be unstoppable to you? To be unstoppable to me. And I, oh gosh, I love that question. Uh, to be unstoppable, unstoppable to me really means but you're not going to take that no for an answer. You believe in yourself so much that you're willing to create that conversation. You're willing to find that way. You're willing to find your voice to get to whatever you think you're meant to do. So just don't take no for an answer, right? Today's, today's no is tomorrow's yes. That's what unstoppable means to me. You're not going to let other things get in your way. You believe in yourself enough where you can push through to reach that goal. And so thank you for that question. Cause I, first of all, I love the name of this podcast unstoppable. And I think, I think what you and I've talked about today is being unstoppable people in our lives, personal and business. Absolutely. And yeah, I, I totally agree with that. And we, I just thank you again for coming out and oh, it's my pleasure. Everybody that's watching, if you are needing that leadership, if you're needing that, that motivation, somebody that's been there, done that, reach out to Cicely. She will be glad to talk to you, set up an interview with you guys. Uh, you know, I, I know, I know where I can vouch for, her. uh, she knows her stuff. So definitely check her out. And Cicely, thank you again for coming thank on. You. Uh, look forward to speaking with you in the future. Big things out of this lady. Be, be looking, be ready. She's going to be doing some big things that she's already doing as well. So thank you so thank much. Thank you.